Today we're making this gorgeous outdoor planter. Beautiful for your home and garden decor. And what are we making it out of? Yes, you got it. Black plastic planter pots. It's true. These are gonna be transformed into this. We have a lot to cover. Let's get right into the studio and have some fun. Now, I have mixed up a little bit in here, not a lot because we're gonna be doing this a little bit at a time. I'm gonna pour my mixture into here and give it a good stir. You want to get as many of the lumps out as possible. Lump free, and that's pretty easy to do. A little bit more of this. All right. I'll take our pot. I'm gonna start off with a small one this time. I'm gonna dip this in. This is kind of like paper mache, but you're using mortar, if, if I can just say it like that. I'm gonna lay these on. It'll be clean looking. Maybe that's the word I want. The less of a cleanup you'll have to do at a later point time. All right, that's looking pretty good. We're gonna let this dry here up on my water bottle. I'm gonna check my work right here. And I see that this part is coming up a little bit. Mortar that down too well, so I'm gonna do that right now. And turn that around, looks pretty good. Our pot is dried. I have to tell you, this is one solid pot. I'm a little impressed, I must say so myself. What I wanna do is create a little bit of a finished look right in here. And I have to tell you, you could actually paint this as it is, plunk a plant in there and call it a day. Uh, you really could, because then it would look organic and there's a lot of texture going on. And if you wanna just finish it off just like that, you could actually do it. What we're gonna do here is, it's always nice to finish off the edges. We finished off the edges uh, before it dried in the first pass here. So that looks really nice. And you can see, look at this. That's that's pretty good. You wanna finish off a nice uh, line there. And the same with here, you're gonna stick a little bit of the shop towel in here, like so. Actually, I want a little bit more damp there and finish out that interior opening. Let me see. And put the finer part or the clear line right down here. And bring that up. Just so it's a little bit cleaner looking. If you wanted to, you could bulk out with some paper and cardboard and then go over the form with the mortar and adhesive mixture with the shop towels. That would be a cost-effective way of handling planter pots or that are plastic. Or actually, any armature for that matter. All right. I think that looks pretty good, I gotta tell you. We are going to let that dry and I'm going to get something for the feet. I think we're gonna use epoxy for the feet. See you in a few minutes. We're gonna be making the three little legs. We're gonna go one, two, and three. And I'm mixing parts A and B, it's epoxy, together. And that's going to envelop each bead so we're not using so much material. I find it just more efficient, more cost efficient, that's for sure. You can also use cork, you can use different things. I'm wanting more of a round shape. You can tell the two different colors here. I keep them separated because once they're mixed, of course, you have a certain amount of working time 
to get them in their formation and get attached. So I'm gonna do these one at a time. And you, this is gonna be a clear look. Like right now you see it a little bit of both colors. There's gonna be one color by the time we're done and it's mixed completely. If it's not mixed completely, well, it may never dry. And of course that's not a good thing, so. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Mm-hmm. Let's stick that in there. And then I'm gonna take some wood glue and attach it to the bottom here. I think one, two, I think that's gonna be a nice little size. Okay, what I'm gonna do is flip this over. I'm gonna hold this last one I put on. Okay, I'm gonna let it dry. What I'm gonna do here is while the feet are drying underneath there, you do want to set a level across here in all directions to make sure that uh, we're not too wonky, you know what I'm saying? Because this is, while it's wet, it's your opportunity to adjust. While our pot is drying, I'm just simply going in and making any touch-ups over the black plastic. And honestly, it's looking pretty good. I did have some extra material in here, so I thought why not go through and make it all one color visually, as well as the top two and a half inches was really my main concern, because aesthetically I like it to look really super clean. We could easily leave this planter pot transformation just like it is, and it would be perfectly acceptable, perfectly fine, but we're gonna take it to the next level. This gets really, really fun, I think. We're taking our epoxy, and I have these really super cute bee silicone molds, and we're gonna make little bees to go around the planter pot. And you can see, I just started putting one in here and you don't even have to wait until they're fully dry. As a matter of fact, it's better not to because then it's more malleable when you put it on the pot and you can kind of shape it, especially when your pot is uneven like this one is. So we're gonna pop that out. See that? Is that so cool, right? And we're going to take our glue and it doesn't matter if the sides of the pot are still damp like this one is. And we're gonna start placing them on the sides. Um, or wherever you want, really. I'll show you this process. It's super easy and you can get anything. You can get dragonflies, you can get um, all types of border molds, um, butterflies, all kinds of things. You don't have to put anything into the mold. You just pop it in. And we're gonna put him into place. Putting the mold together, putting them on the pot, and I will be back. Dried and completed. I really debated on what I was going to paint it, if I was going to paint it, and I came up with a solution of simply taking some of this um, flex bond, mixing it up a little water here and making a solution with a little water. And I'm also going to add a little bit of our uh, adhesive. We're going to do a loose kind of a loose mixture here. What I'd like to do is simply coat this over with this mixture instead of painting it. I actually like the color of this. It's kind of a non-color, it's white. And I'm kind of favoring the neutrality of it. Let's see how that's gonna look. It's almost gonna look like fossil-like, I think. That's what I'm kind of going for. All right, this is pretty good. This is thinner than a brownie mix and kind of like a heavy cream almost. Let's try this out. 
You can always thicken it up. You can always adjust it. Oh yeah, 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 I like this. Now what I really want to still make out is the identification of all the bees. What I'm starting to do is to take a little bit of this copper paint. I don't want a lot. I'm actually taking most of this off of my little rag here and I'm simply brushing this on the bees. I don't want to get a lot of the paint on there only to kind of bring out the raised areas a little bit. It's looking pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. This is some gold powder. It's actually more of a bronze, I think, but I'm just gonna dip this in and kind of taking a bit of my concrete mixture, which is the flex bond once again. And sometimes when I feel like I overdo something, I gotta go back in and rework it. Okay. Because we are using a modified thin set, there is no need to spray with a clear or clear coat it with anything. However, I did use paint on the bumblebee, so I'm going to be sealing that with the Rust-Oleum Matte Clear. That is it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. Have an amazing, creative, and inspirational week. Be well.